Hey there, what's up? I did promise that I'll make more Unity tutorial videos talking about the game that I'm currently making um, and how I'm building it, and so I decided to make one about something that I just changed and I think is really, really cool and really simple uh, in its concept, and uh, some people actually could find this useful. So let's, let's talk about this. Um, first of all, this is a, a tower platformer, and in this tower platformer I felt that it's very important for you keep on moving, have the flow of the movement keep on going, and uh, to me I really like the mechanic of, of continuous screen. So when you jump off the left side, you move off the left side, you actually come out of the right side. And this actually works perfectly. You can see that uh, I'm halfway in the left side and halfway in the right side. All right, so this works very, very well. And um, the way I originally did it, there's a couple of ways of approaching it clearly in terms of, of coding and uh, the way that it actually behaves and works. And the original way that I did it was with a clone, meaning once I came out of, of the left side, a clone would appear on the right side and it would mimic my actions. And this was fine as long as I didn't actually have animations. But now that I do have animations, there's code behind when each animation should play. And this means that I have to make sure my clone knows exactly at which state my original is and that's a little bit of a headache to do. So uh, I thought about a different ways of, of doing it, and luckily one of, of uh, the Unity teachers um, in my game design classes thought about a wonderful way to do it that totally works. I implemented it and it totally works and I'm very, very happy with it, so I decided to show you it today and it is a, a continuous way using cameras. So let's talk about it a little bit. I'll go off to my scene and I'll pick off my main camera here and we can see that I actually have three cameras. So let's talk about each one of them. Um, very basically, you can look at the inspector here on the right side. This is my main camera. Please ignore everything else. We're only going to focus on the continuous screen. I'm actually showing you the prototype, um, the game as it stands right now. So there's a lot of other stuff going on, but let's just focus on the cameras. So clear flags is the skybox. So this kind of means it's my main camera. Um, background color. Culling mask. The culling mask means which layers I'm actually showing right now. And I know it says mixed, but it's essentially everything. I won't go into why it's mixed, but it is essentially everything. So it shows all of the layers. This is my main camera, all right? It's orthographic because it's a 2D game, clearly. And um, the only other important thing here is is the depth. The depth is, is minus one. We'll talk about this in a second. So I do have two additional cameras, one to the left, one to the right. They are identical, all right? They're only in different positions. And let's see what we have here. The clear flags is depth only. And what this means that this camera, whatever it actually looks on, okay, which is this area, whatever it looks on, it'll take and put on my main camera and consider depth. Now, the depth of my main camera, like we said, is minus one. The depth here is zero. So it'll draw on top of my main camera, all right? It goes from the lowest to the, to the highest. So zero is more than minus one, all right? And um, I'll basically, whatever it sees will be drawn on top of my main camera. Now, the culling mask is only player move, and if I'll actually go into my, my character, which is called player animated currently, um, the layer is player move. So the culling mask for the left camera only shows this layer, which means it only shows my main character. And so once my character goes in there, it'll actually render it. And I could show you this, this <clears throat> show you this by putting it side by side. I'm actually using the, the standard layout, the default layout that is, that's highly uncomfortable for developing, but very comfortable for actually recording and showing you stuff, I feel. So um, if I actually play this and remove maximize on play, you can see that as I go into the camera that's right now highlighted, as I go into it, actually appear on the right side, but there's there's not anything real on the right side. I'm, I'm actually just going into this camera. It simply renders this on top of my main camera. Okay, this one, the main camera here. And uh, you just see it, and it just works. And once I go too far in, I'll actually get teleported. And this is done with a very, very simple uh, little bit of code that I wrote. I call it camera continuous screen. So let's just go over it here. In Awake, I take my absolute scale. The reason I take my absolute scale is for modular reasons. If I ever change my scale, I won't have to change the code. That's it, it's purely for modular reasons. And then I take my collider size. 
Um, this is actually get component in children because I have a couple of colliders and they're all the same. I could just do get component. Um, there's no real need for the in children, but let's not change it now. I take the box collider, the size, and clearly X. And the reason I take the box collider, not the sprite, is again very simple. If I'll look at my actual animator, um, animated character, not my animator, the sprite, this is the sprite, okay? But this is the important part of the character. The collider really actually says where my character is. All right, I, the, the sprite is a little bit bigger because that's what I got in the sprite cheat for my animator, and that's perfectly fine. The collider is what determines the size, and that's why I took that instead of the, um, the sprite size. So, again, I just take my collider, and then in update, I do two very small, simple ifs. If my current position goes off the left side, uh, this is the left side, or it goes off the right side, then I teleport to the other side. I'm using world width here that's taken from randomizer, which is another function that randomizes stuff, but it holds for me for this game the world width and world height. We won't go over the entire code here because there's no reason. We only care about this specific line. So the world width, um, some people have a little bit of issue of, of, of conceptualizing this, so I'll try my best at explaining it. The screen, think about the screen as resolution. And that's what the camera sees. She sees the, the resolution of the screen. But you also have the world, and the world is what Unity knows, what Unity talks about. When you, when you change your transform, you're changing it in the world points. So I want screen to world point. I give it the screen point, and I get the world point. The screen point that I give it is just a new vector of screen width and screen height. And then I take the, the world point that I get, I take the X size of it. And that's how I have the world width. Now remember that width here, um, what it actually refers to is from the middle, okay, the middle camera here is zero, zero. Well, it's actually a little bit higher up, but the, the X size is zero. And to the right, it's plus width and to the left is minus width. Okay, it's actually because I'm looking at the camera, it's reversed from what I'm doing with my hands, so I'll stop hand gesturing. But it is width plus to the uh, to one side and width um, minus to the other side. All right, so if I actually take a look at my, my cameras, they're actually all the way, instead of being minus five, because it's it's one to one right now, my resolution is one to one, it's 720 by 720. Um, this is actually minus 10, and the right camera is plus 10. All right, so that's that's the width that I get here, and I check if you go, if the, the X position actually goes off to the left, considering my collider size, so the size of my actual character, divided by two because I found it, it to be, uh, just it feels a little bit better, times my absolute scale, just in case I have different scale, and then I just put the position into whatever position I am currently on the other side. So it's world width times two, it's all the way on the other side. And that's it, it works. It works and I'm very happy with it. It does have its own quirks in the sense that if I go off the left side, and if the right side of the screen, if this little this guy actually gets hit by anything, because I do have enemies, there's, oh, actually, I, I just teleported already. Um, but if, if you can see it on both sides, if, the, if this gets hit, there's nothing here. So I won't actually get hit. Okay, my actual character is on the right side here. So this isn't my actual character, it's just a drawing of it. And um, that could could cause, I guess, an issue in that sense, because if it gets hit, nothing will get hit. But the enemies won't target this. They'll target my actual character. So the likelihood of that happening is very low. In addition to the fact that when when exactly do you spend in, in limbo? Never. You never spend time in limbo. You're mostly in the middle of the screen or, or to the side of the screen, but not not off to the side. So I'm not really concerned about that. I think that's kind of the only drawback. This is very, very simple, easy, nice, and it works very, very well. I really liked it, so I wanted to show it off. Uh, and that's it, it's called Continuous Screen. I hope this has been helpful and interesting. If you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.